Hello and welcome to Billy's Craft Room. In today's film I'll be showing you how to make background papers like these using plain white cardstock and dye-based ink. For this project I'll be using Ranger's Adirondack dye-based ink, caramel, butterscotch and espresso. Cut and dry foam mounted on a wooden block to make it easier to apply. White cardstock. I'll be using a heat tool to dry the ink and working on a craft sheet. Taking the plain white card stock and the lightest of the three inks, this one's caramel. Using the cut and dry foam, tap into the ink to pick up some colour, dab off on the craft sheet and apply to your card stock using a circular motion. Try and keep the foam nice and flat as you will get a better application of ink this way. I'm not trying to completely cover the cardstock, just tone down some of the white. You can see slightly mottled effect there. I'm going to wipe down the craft sheet with a damp cloth just to remove any excess ink to avoid muddying the ink pads. Next I'm going to apply the butterscotch ink. This is the middle of our three colours. Again, apply to the foam, dab off on the craft sheet and apply to your card using a circular motion. You can see I've got a bit of a heavy application of ink there where I didn't dab off on the craft sheet first. Apply the ink wherever suits your project. I seem to be going around the edges on this today but you really can apply the ink wherever suits you. Just keep the sponge nice and flat to avoid any heavy edge marks off the foam. Blend into your lighter colours. I think you can see there a bit more tone added with that darker colour applied. Again I'm going to wipe down the sheet just to remove any excess ink. And now for our last colour I'm going to apply the espresso. This is a lovely rich dark brown, but you do want to dab off on the craft sheet first. If you apply this one too heavily, it really will muddy your colours. But a gentle application of ink does add a nice depth and shadow to your project. As you can see I'm actually picking up the ink from the craft sheet rather than dabbing onto the ink pad each time. Again, another way of just picking up a small amount of ink. Still applying in a circular motion and keeping the sponge flat so I don't get any hard lines. Like you can see, that's got a much darker, richer tone to it now with the extra colour applied. Another way to add texture to the project is using water. I'm going to use a mini mister filled with water and we're just going to spray over the cardstock to create a dappled effect. Now because this is dye based ink, the ink will diffuse away from the water droplets and you'll be left with a snowflake effect. You can see the water on the surface there. Now the longer you leave that, the more diffused the water will be and you'll get a stronger effect. When you get an effect that you like, heat with your heat tool to dry it off. Hopefully you can see there that pretty snowflake effect. It's a good way to get texture into your project. Now as you can see from our original project, we did have a pattern paper. To create the pattern paper, use a decorative stamp and the lightest of your inks 
This one was caramel. I find these dye inks apply better to stamps if you swirl the ink on rather than dabbing. I'm still working on the craft sheet but I've got a sheet of funky foam underneath here. You do tend to get a better stamp impression by doing that. Stamp a few times before you reapply the ink. It just gives a nice effect. You can also twist the ink onto the stamp, that works as well. Missed a bit. Tapping just a little more ink on there. Again we're stamping off the edge rather than trying to get the whole stamp just square in the middle. You need to heat that to dry that ink, but there you go, pattern paper. Wipe down that craft sheet so you don't leave any excess ink to pick up on your project next time. I'm going to be adding some Espresso ink now. Because this is a little ATC size piece, I'm going to be using it for the main motive on my project. So picking up some ink on the foam. I'm going to do a lot heavier application this time of the brown, just to the edges. This can create the look of a piece that's already been matted, but it does give a nice border to your main image as well. If you work some extra ink into the corners, that works nicely too, that gives a nice effect. Still applying the ink using a circular motion, then you won't get any hard edges from the foam. And we're just going to heat set this to dry the ink. And there you have it, decorative paper. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. For more inspiration, please visit the blog on www.billyscraftroom.wordpress.com.